So welcome to this week's video. We're doing something different this time and we're going to be setting up Windows 11 in a virtual box. We're going to be getting a free version of Windows to make that happen. So in this video, we'll be running um, on vir virtual box on Windows. You're welcome to give that a go on a different operating system, but I'll be showing you in Windows. I'll be showing you from scratch. So I'll show you how to download and install VirtualBox, which is a free piece of software. We'll be downloading a free version of the Windows 11 development environment, and that's a time-limited um, installation. You'll have to go and reinstall later on after it's expired. We're looking at how to set up and uh, customize the new VirtualBox instance after we've imported that Windows 11 development environment. It's actually pre-configured for VirtualBox. And we'll look at starting up that virtual machine. So I'm on the VirtualBox website. If you go to the downloads page, and I've got the link in the description below uh, to this page, we're going to click on Windows Hosts. You might be on a different platform, in which case you can choose the applicable download. Once you click on Windows Hosts, it'll prompt you to download the file. So save that, and then we'll catch back up and we'll have a go at installing. So I've opened up the file that was installed. We're going to hit next. Now what's important here is that we untick VirtualBox Python support. We don't want that. That requires that you've got Python installed and that's not going to help us at all. We'll leave the networking as it is, but we're not trying to control VirtualBox through with Python scripts. So that has no use for us. If you do need that, um, it will give you an error message on the next screen if you haven't got the required prerequisites it's installed. So make sure you untick that. It'll save you a lot of headaches. There's a warning here that it could interrupt the networking interfaces, um, therefore your internet connection. So make sure you're not doing anything important while you are running this installation. Now I'm too worried about having a desktop short but shortcut or a quick launch shortcut, but I will register file extensions and I'd like a copy of the shortcuts in the start menu. All right, so that's installed. You can leave that box ticked if you want to open up VirtualBox after you finish the installation. And before we make a new VirtualBox, we have to get a copy of Windows. So let's have a look at the different options available. So I've left the link in the description below for this page. It's a Microsoft page for downloading a version of Windows 11. It's got a couple of development tools already installed in it. It's fully set up and ready to go. And it's a free copy. It does expire, however. This particular one is expiring in about two months' time, based on the date I recorded this video. Um, when your version does expire, you'll have to download a new version and start again. But this isn't. This video isn't designed for running Windows every day in a virtual machine. It's designed so you can use it for developing. So you'll have to download a copy of it from there. In this particular example, we're going to get VirtualBox. It is quite a large file. It's a lot larger than downloading Windows ISO, but it is set up and ready to go. You scroll down into the frequently asked questions. It says you'll need 8 gig of RAM and at least 70 gig of disk space. So that file we've downloaded, we're going to have to extract that. It's quite a large file, 22 gig. Now we can go to the import button. We're going to the folder we've extracted. And the default should be ready to go. Let's give it some time to import. It's quite a big file. Before you start it up, I'll have to go into settings. And there's a couple of things you'll probably have to change around. Um, the first one is if you go into system, you'll have to most likely increase the memory. It, it starts off um, quite low. They recommend a minimum of 8 gig. Make sure you don't go into the red zone or the orange zone because you do have to allow some memory for your host system, your current system to use. So be careful you don't ever do that or it could uh, make your computer freeze up. Um, processor as well, um, don't overdo it. You do need to retain some processors for your host operating um, system. 
and in display if you do have some issues you may have to disable 3d acceleration if you do have issues um, starting it up so we'll hit ok and then we'll hit the start button to load it up We're into the Windows desktop, it's loaded. Now, if you go up into the view menu, we can go to full screen or seamless. And it gives you a little warning there to remind you that to get out of it, you're gonna to have to hold down the host button F and it tells you on the bottom right that we have the right control button. So I'll hit switch, we can get that working in full screen. And for example, you might want to go through into devices and shared folders and set up some shared folders so you can copy files backwards and forwards. And we've got their um, shared clipboard as well because you've already got the host extensions installed on this version of Windows, the guest editions. So it's ready to go. There's also the drag and drop. So that's it for this video. Uh, remember to hit that uh, like button if you found it useful. Remember to subscribe to my channel to get regular updates of my weekly videos all about uh, modern web technologies and front-end design and make sure you leave some comments below. I'll see you next time.